In this video we're going to look at um, the MQTT protocol, we're going to take a look at the actual package structure and we're going to begin to look at the MQTT message format, uh, the header format, uh, message fields and the coding of the message fields and we're going to look through a control message uh, coding, coding example, we're going to look at the connect and connect uh, acknowledge uh, messages. Now MQTT is a binary based protocol the control elements are binary bytes and not text bytes, or sorry, not text strings as in uh, the HTTP protocol. It generally uses a command and a, an acknowledge structure. So you send a command, you get an acknowledgement, but that's not true for all of the commands. Um, the published quality of service zero is not actually acknowledged by the by the server. And this is a little diagram showing that that process. You get a connect and a connect acknowledge, a subscribe, a subscribe acknowledge and a publish and a publish acknowledge except if you're using quality of service zero and it's not acknowledged. Now topic names, client IDs, usernames, passwords and things like that are all encoded as UTF-8 strings. The payload uh, that excludes what we just covered here, the topic names etc is binary data and the coding of that data is application specific so it can be coded any way you want. Now the actual MQTT packet consists of a two byte fixed header which you always have and that sets the minimum length of the MQTT packet of two bytes. A variable header and that's not always present and a payload which again is not always present and we can see that in this diagram here we have a fixed header which is two bytes and it's split into a control header and a packet length and we're going to look at that in a second plus a variable length header which is not always there plus a payload which is not always there and that sets our minimum packet size of two bytes and we have a control and we have a packet length byte which is two bytes and this is the encoding here it's hexadecimal E0 and the packet length is 00 because there's nothing after here let's take a look first at the packet length field or the remaining length field and the minimum size of this field is 1 bytes, the maximum size is 4 bytes, which gives us a maximum packet size of around 256 megabytes. Now, it's variable length, 1 to 4 bytes, and it uses a continuation bit to determine whether it's actually using additional bytes. Now, the number of bytes following the length fields includes the variable, a header, and, and the payload. And you can see here, this little diagram is meant to illustrate it. We've got the control bytes, we've got the remaining length field, which is 1 to 4 bytes, and then we've actually got the remaining length, which is includes a variable header and the payload, and that's included in the, in the remaining length. The control and the packet length field aren't part of the remaining length. Now here's the table I, I mentioned, this is taken from the actual specification itself. Uh, we use one byte if the packet length is between 0 and 127, two bytes if it's between 128 and eight, uh, 16,000, uh, three bytes there and four bytes for, for this. Now out of the, the byte uh, we're only using seven bits for the length. So if we've got four bytes, we've actually we haven't got um, 32 bits to describe the length. We've only got um, 28 bits to describe the length. The most significant part of the byte here is used as a continuation flag. So if it's set to zero, it's not continued. If it's set to one, and then it's continued. And we can see that in this example. Uh, it's, this example is meant to illustrate it, should I say? And if we're encoding decimal 321, it requires two bytes. And you can see here, this is the least significant byte. The continuation flag is set. I put it in black. And we've got the next byte here. And the continuation flag is in red, which is not set. And it's important to realize that the, the least significant byte is transmitted to line first and the most significant bytes come afterwards and you can see that here now the least significant byte we've got to represent 65 so we're using seven by sorry seven bits for 65 which is there 64 plus a one which is 65 and for the most significant bytes we've got 256 which is here 
one zero that that represents if I do these in binary now, so in binary now this is the zero column this is the two to the six column this is the two to the seventh and this is the two to the eighth which is 256 decimal and if I translate this into decimal I get two and if I translate this one into decimal I don't get 65 because we have to add in the continuation bit which is the one which gives us 128 plus 265 plus which is decimal 193 and when I look at that in the packet sniffer I would see 193 going to line first followed by 2. Now let's have a look at the the control field and that control field is the first or eight bits that sent to line and it consists of two two four bit fields and it contains the protocol commands and the the responses now the four first four most significant bits are the command and the other four bits are used as control flags and it's shown here so here we got the command and we, here we got the control flags so for the connect message I would have 0001 in the packet type field here and for a connect acknowledge message I would have 0010 in the packet type here and there's a table taken from the specification again and you can see the connect message here it has a value of 1 and remember this is the most significant uh, four bits of the byte and the connection acknowledges a value of two again most significant four bits of the byte and it translates to 16 and 32 and I've put them down in binary here and for the connection acknowledge there's the binary and if we look at the flags we can see the connect flag basically all zero and the connection acknowledge so they're not really used uh, the only time they do get used is in the publish you can see here the quality of service retain and the duplicate otherwise all the other control fl messages flags are zero and here's a, a list of the the codes this is taken from the python client uh, code and you can see the connect and the connect knowledge and these are hexadecimal 10 hexadecimal 20 and that corresponds to decimal 16 and decimal 32 here and here's a message now this is the client connecting to the server and it's send, sending the connection control header you can see it there 10 and this is the actual payload it sends you can see it here some of it you can read some of it you can't remember the center's binary um, but you can see the the way the Python print statement works it does actually print out the ASCII ones if it, it recognizes the ASCII so it sees MQTT and it sees Python test here which is the name of the client that I'm using to connect and the total message length is again hexadecimal 17 which corresponds to uh, decimal 23 so it's 23 bytes following the length flag so all these here now the receive message is 20 which is the connection acknowledge and it's got a length of 2 this is the receive data length of 2 and it's got 000 in the remaining bytes and this is what it looks like in decimal there's the connection acknowledge there's the length field and there's the data this is a variable header and at the bottom we can see the disconnect we can send the disconnect which is e0 and you can see that if I look back here there's the disconnect code here e0 now I'm just going to bring up the specification and I'm going to show you the connection knowledge packet taken from the specification. So here's the specification for the connection acknowledge command response should I say. It has a fixed header and a variable header. Now the fixed header you can see here that um, corresponds to decimal 32 which we saw earlier. The byte 2 has a length of 2 because we're using two, 2 bytes for the variable header and if I scroll down here the variable header is described here byte 1 and byte 2 and you can see the variable header is basically all zero and here it's not used by one by two the only thing that is used is this one here which is the uh, SP flag and if I scroll down here it's it's the session present flag and that's all to do with clean sessions in in the instance I showed you 
the SP flag was set to zero because we had the last two bytes as zero. Now if you want to find out more details of the actual protocol itself and I recommend you download the specification I'll put a link to it in the video as well if you want to download it. Now it brings us to the end of the video if you've got any comments then please leave them below if you like the video then click on the like button below and if you want to get notified of new videos then you can subscribe to the channel and feel free to share the video on social media if you liked it. Until next time, goodbye.